boom, put a 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 boom, boom. A sad, B sad. What side are you on? Well, welcome back to another episode of A sad, B sad podcast. What's up, Adam? Uh, not too much, Brooke. How are you? I am good. I am trying to avoid like everybody because I feel like everybody is like, um, I don't feel well. Stay away. Like, remember yeah. in the old school movies when people would hold up the cross when they thought a vampire was in the room? That's yeah. what I'm doing to like. Everybody. God, be gone. <laughs> Well, and, and it's and it's not just the it's not just the big stuff. It's just that time of year where, you know, colds and flus and be feeling gross. Right. Even when it's not COVID goes around, you don't want to get that stuff either. And then people have like I have allergies. So and then I'm in a new area with. So I'm still adjusting to this new area. And so like every morning I wake up a little like, oh, I'm congested. Is it just my allergies <laughs> or is it COVID? And then by the time I like get up and shower and stuff, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah i mean i i know pe- of people that are just trying to get as many tests as they can because you know they work in the public and then they're come home and if anything that you know little snuffle they gotta run a test just to be sure because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they're gonna be back in public or they work in the health industry and they you know have to be absolutely positive they're not carrying anything around and of course we know the cdc says five days from the onset of symptoms so yeah <sighs> Uh, we cannot not talk about Bob Saget. Yeah, Bob Saget, Sydney Poitier as well. Betty White. Uh, Betty Which... White. It, it's been a rough start to the year. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's like everybody was so excited for 2022 and then 2022 hit. You know, we, we go into 2022 with the loss of Betty White. And then a couple of days in, we lose Sydney Portier. And then a couple of days later, it's like, oh, and by the way, if that wasn't enough for you, boom, here you go. Here's a punch in the gut, Bob Saget. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe this is grumpy old man Adam talking, but it feels like this happens every year. Not that like the same three people die, but that we, 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 we set up our like expectations and we're like oh blankety blank gear is gonna be the best ever and then like five days in they're like oh my gosh reality still exists i hate this year <laughs> it's like it's, it's not the year's fault like <laughs> the Gregorian calendar just basically is a made-up you know thing so it's not like fate's like oh phew, different year on the made-up human calendar i better act different I love how you said not the same three people like we're in English class trying to avoid an assignment and and it's the same three people (laughs) and you're like wait didn't they die last year (laughs) why these people like every year like why why is the same people no but somebody always like it is always sad when anybody dies whether you're famous or not and then it just I think for some reason, when stuff bad stuff happens in the first month of a year, everyone's first reaction is going to be like, oh, well, this year sucks as well. And Sorry, guys. It's just every day sucks. Yeah. It's just that's just independent of a made up calendar year. Yeah. Oh, me. Um, any new show? I, I binged Emily in Paris. I was told by a friend to watch it she's like it's pretty cute and I was I refused to watch it because I had heard so many negative things and it had been panned so hard for like not being diverse and I was like I'm not watching it and then a friend of mine was like no it's actually pretty cute and I watched it I binged it I liked it and it's got a third and fourth season coming and I'm happy it it's always interesting when people are so specific like I don't want to watch this show because of this that and this and the other and but it's like the only reason that everyone knows these is because so many people are watching it, you know? So it's like, it can't be bad if we have this many things to complain about because we all have the touch points for what they are. So we're all watching it, you know? Like you try to complain about it all, but then we're like, oh, only reason we're all complaining is because we're all watching. <laughs> right. Well, like me with you and Ted Lasso, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like this show. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Prove to Adam it's terrible. And then like 10 minutes into the first episode, I'm like, oh my God, this is the best show ever. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, it did it did take like eight months. So. <laughs> I mean, you held out for a very long time. I held out till season two, and you started talking about season two, and I was like, "Fine, I'm just gonna watch it to prove it's terrible." 
And I'm now I'm like having withdrawals because I need season three, like right yeah. now. Uh, Brent Goldstein, uh, the Roy Keane, not Roy Keane, uh, Roy Keane. That's what I think that's a that's real player. Roy Kent. Roy, Roy Kent. Kent. Yeah. Yeah. Which was basically based off of Roy Keane, the former Manchester United, very grumpy midfielder. Um, got it nominated for a Screen Actor Guild Awards today. And uh, those came out and got a whole bunch. And he was just flipping out on uh, Twitter, basically uh, being super excited about getting nominated, but then also who he was nominated with Mm -hmm. and how he's, these are all people that he's wanted to meet. And like, it's going to be the worst for them because he's going to ruin their day by just wanting to hang out with all of these people and (laughs) get to know them. (laughs) Like, I'm going to be all over. I'm going to be all around the whole time. Very opposite of Roy Kent, who would be like, F off. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So here, and I will I will attempt to uh, edit this, but this is uh, his post on, uh, uh, yeah, I I think it was on Twitter. He reposted it on Twitter. Holy effing stuff! It means the world to be recognized by my peers and SAG. I am so pleased to be nominated with my phenomenal cast. You know, we'll tell you sometimes to ruin things by saying effing hell, you're so good, instead of my actual line because I'm in awe. Then. To be nominated in the same category with four all-time heroes, like Sirius, got all their movies and their posters type all-time heroes. Truly <laughs> mind-blowing. Thank you, Sag, for putting me anywhere near these legends. Pray for them, because if I get to meet them, I will drive them all insane. Jason can attest to this. <laughs> I love it, because it's so opposite of Roy Kent. But if you read Brett's Twitter, that's so him. Well, and uh, so the the four that he's nominated, so Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Comedy Series is the category, and it's Brett Goldstein for Ted Lasso, Jason Sudeikis from Ted Lasso, and then he's not Ron. This is a pretty amazing group of people. Uh, Michael Douglas, okay, but Martin Short and Steve Martin, both from Only Murders in the Building. So yeah. They're, they're also of a different era than Brett Goldstein. So there is no doubt that he had like, that he's watched Three Amigos a million times, right? I'm guessing. Right. So it's understandable that he's he's kind of, as he said, uh, editedly, holy uh, forking shirt. <laughs> oh man, have you watched uh, season, what, three, four? Four of Cobra Kai? I have not. I have. Uh, I have not watched a single episode of Cobra Kai. That's. Are this you is like the, me? I know this is. We flip spots because you've talked about it and I've said, ah, oh, no, 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 no. and it was like, okay, everyone tells me it's so good. And I'm like, yeah, Karate Kid was okay, but I was really more of a surf ninjas guy. And you know, like, so yeah, I, I put it off, but I'm sure I'll enjoy it when I finally like crack and watch it. No spoiler here because, of course, Karate Kid, you know, our protagonist or whatever is is Daniel. Mm-hmm. Well, the really brilliant thing about Cobra Kai, one, it's very, extremely nostalgic. So all the music and the, the bands and, and, and references, you know, it completely takes you back to the 80s. Of course, it's current day. So you've mm-hmm. got your current day references, you know, social media and stuff. But you know, with the older characters, you know, they're talking about like bands from like Twisted Sister and um, Chicago and, you know, all these things. So it kind of takes you back there. But it's so brilliant the way that Johnny was the the evil one in the movies. And then like they've and that's the whole point of the, the series is they kind of make Johnny the hero. Like you root for Johnny. And it's so mm-hmm. brilliant the way they do it, because you're like, after watching the movies, you're like, there's no way I would ever root for Johnny. And then you're like, oh man, yeah. I'm for Johnny. This guy's the worst. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. I, I need I need to give it a try. It is on my list of, of things that I've been told that I will enjoy that for some you know just obstinate reason, I'm like, well, I'm going to wait then. I really do. I, too much. I really think you would enjoy it. It's I mean, yes, it is cheesy, but it's like a good. It's, it's so cheesy, but in the way that you're like, okay, what's going to happen next? And it's on Netflix. So it's not like PG, like the movie. So when they yeah. say stuff, you're like, did Johnny just say that? Okay. Like, hold, hold on a second. 
Yeah. You're like, oh, wow, he really did say that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> it is not 1986 anymore. <laughs> right. Okay. We are all adults now. And Johnny is letting us know. <laughs> so yeah, check it out. And it's amazing because Ralph Macchio, I was looking up their ages the other day. Like Ralph Macchio is like 60. Um, William Zabka is 55. Mm-hmm. I mean, and these dudes are still pulling these karate moves and stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would have guessed that if you become famous for karate kid, you just have to accept that karate is now a part of your life. <laughs> yeah. Her. Yeah. And you, and you better get good at it because I would assume that every place you go after the, you, you know, win the karate tournament in the movie, somebody's trying to pull the, the crane move on you no matter where you go. Yeah. So you better be ready. Better be ready. Even at 60. <laughs> I would be tempted if I saw, you know, if I saw William Zemkivka uh, walking through the hallway, I would be tempted to try to break out the crane, even though he's not even the one who gets, you know, defeated all the time. <laughs> oh, man. That's all I got. That's all I've seen this week. Yeah. Uh, there's a new. Gordon Ramsay cooking show, Next Level Chef, which I've uh, enjoyed. They've got three kitchens on top of each other. It, it just seems like a very silly idea, but it's kind of interesting. They're all very different uh, kitchens. So like you could be in a state-of-the-art kitchen or like somebody's basement kitchen. So uh, it's kind of neat to see a new, new spin on the uh, cooking show motif so Mm -hmm. that's about the only new thing i've watched lately still you know comfort shows a a plenty of castle and murder she wrote and uh i'm almost all the way through uh, the star trek enterprise series with scott bacula okay uh, which that's like a like a double like nostalgia burger because i get like scott bacula from and i get star trek all in one uh and i Barely, like I remember watching the the Enterprise series when it first came out, but uh, it was my high, my college and early adult years where uh, there's a lot going on in life. So I, it's good to revisit and kind of see what I don't really remember at all. Okay, all right. Well, add Cobra Kai to your list. It's on the list. It's a very <laughs> long list, but it's on there. <laughs> Move it up. Move it up. All right. So this week is episode. 77 which means i get to go first Uh so a real quick update i you know we talked a couple episodes about lauren and as of the last time i checked lauren smithfield as of the last time i checked there was not much more progress but i do have phone numbers and emails So I'm going to post those on our website and, you know, you can call and say, Hey, what is, what's going, you know, people do this all the time. And this is kind of what sparks people to get in gear. Like what is going on Mm -hmm. with this case? Why aren't we hearing more about this case? And maybe that will help, you know, kick things into, to overdrive and, and get some justice for Lauren. And it's been, I've noticed a few more uh, of the hashtags appearing Mm -hmm. uh, in in various feeds and stuff. But even then, it doesn't seem like it's getting to the to the nationwide attention that it may take for this seemingly to to go somewhere because they've local authorities have already responded to the local uproar. uh, And it feels like the only way that this is going to get more attention is if you get some bigger uproar, whether it's on a nationwide or, you know, regional level where somebody else steps in like a governor or somebody says we got to do something yeah yeah so hopefully you know we'll put that out there and maybe you can spread the word and and spread the the information and we can help get some justice for sweet lauren so when i first moved here i had no idea that i had moved to the land of nico jenkins and boy mm. and actually he was born in connecticut you know where um lauren's story takes place but yeah just weird you know quick ink there very weird very weird so nico was born september 16th of 1986 in connecticut to david maggie and Lori jenkins couple never married but they had five children together 
Lori Jenkins has stated that their relationship was extremely violent. And like, when you hear more about this person, you get it. In 1978, um, David was convicted of manslaughter, but that conviction was later set aside. He died, David, in 2009 and had been convicted for several terroristic threats at the time of his passing. So this is what this kid's born into. This this man was born into. Mm-hmm. Nico and his sisters, Lori, Sophia, Melanie, and Erica grew up in Omaha, which is literally 45 minutes away. Just um, down the road. Just down the road with um, a family that was very well known for their violent crimes. 38 people in the family are known to have been convicted of crimes. Um dating back several generations and i'm assuming these are more than just traffic violations uh yeah this 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 dude i like i feel like he seemed destined for a life of violent crime because 38 people dating back several generations yeah at that at that point it's just it's not a family you know like history it's like a family trait it's like a legacy like yeah, yeah it's, it's like legacy. oh well you know oh well my all my parents worked in the you know mortuary business i guess i'll be a mortuarian right so mortician. here's a mortician yeah a mortuarian nope i like that better <laughs> earlier when we weren't recording you said you liked mises instead of mice for the, yeah, key, for the keyboard yeah. i like mortuarian I feel like when you're talking about multiple computer mice, it should be Mises because then we're, because no one's going to be like, oh man, my house is so full of Mises and, and be like, oh, you have a rodent infestation. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, you just need to get rid of your outdated technology. <laughs> oh man. So here's an interesting side note. The Jenkins family spawns from a guy named Levi Levering, who was a well-respected tribe leader in Omaha. He was the first Native American commissioner to the Presbyterian General Assembly in 1911. His uncle, Nelson B. Levering Sr., was a famous boxer from Macy, Nebraska. He was in the 1947 Midwest Golden Gloves champ and the Kansas State welterweight champ. Uh, He was actually inducted into the American Indian Hall of Fame in Kansas. He fought on a boxing card with Joe Lewis. When his, wow. I know when his boxing career was over, he worked at the Omaha tribes education department. So it's like, there's this one side of the family that's really, really well respected and like great citizens. And then you've got this like dangling withered branch. That's just full of violent criminals. Yeah, The, the black sheep branch. Yeah. So at the ripe old age of seven, Nico committed his first crime. He took a gun to Highland Elementary where he was enrolled. Fortunately, no one was injured that time. Mm. At the age of 15, he was charged with carjacking and aggravated assault and sentenced to 21 years in prison when he was 16. So at 15, he commits the crime and then at 16, he's sentenced. Nico serves 10 of the 21 years and he's released on July 30th of of 2013 while he was incarcerated at the tecumseh state prison he married chandra jenkins on february 6th of 2010 so around 501 a.m on august 11th of 2013 so not even a month after his release a police officer discovers two bodies in a white ford pickup truck near a swimming pool at 18th and f street in spring lake park omaha can I, can I just say, what's the deal with like number letter streets in Nebraska? Cause there's a bunch of those here in Lincoln too. Yeah. I think it's, it's just like a state thing. No, man. Like, like everything's off of O street and 48th and 27th and, and vine and F and, and it's like, okay, we get it. We get it. Uh, every, it seems like every like metropolitan area has their street naming quirks. Like mm-hmm. in where I'm at in St. Paul, basically all of the uh like a ton of the streets are president named ah okay yeah which i mean it's just which is kind of strange but then there's just like this whole section where you could definitely tell that they were just 
like out of names. They just started putting presidents in order. <laughs> As you're driving down the road, you're like, wait a sec, what, we're still doing this? <laughs> so, and then, but like Minneapolis does, they do abs and streets. And that gets confusing because you could be at 47th and 47th, but oh. you know, they're different. So, yeah, you know, it's just every, every place is unique and a beautiful oh, snowflake. Oh, no, I would not like that. I'm on the corner no, it's of 47th very... and 47th. <laughs> and the thing is, you could say that and be in two places. Ugh, no. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, thank you. So the two victims, 26-year-old Juan Uribe Pena and 29-year-old Jorge C. Caja Ruiz, had been shot in the head. Juan had also been shot in the groin. Their pockets had been turned out, uh, turned inside out. Um, and they were, so they were lured to meet two women for the chance for sex. The women were Erica and Christina, who we're going to talk about more later. We've already mentioned Erica, but we'll talk about her a little bit more later. Eight days later, on August 19th, around 7.22 a.m., 22-year-old Curtis Bradford's body was found outside of a detached garage at 13th and Clark Street by a man that was returning home after working a night shift at a convenience store. Police found uh, two bullet wounds in Curtis's back. Get this, just the day before, Curtis Bradford and Nico Jenkins had posed for a Facebook photo together. Curtis is the only victim familiar to Jenkins. They met in prison. Two days after that, Nico Jenkins would kill his fourth and final victim, proven victim on august ah see and then there's that (laughs) yes so around august 21st at 2 15 a.m the body of 33 year old andrea kruger was found by a deputy sheriff that was responding to a shots fired call her body was found in the street at 168th and fort street she suffered multiple 12 gauge shotgun wounds to the face the neck and shoulder Andrea had been on her way home from her bartending job. She was actually last seen on surveillance video locking up the Deja Vu Lounge at 1.47 a.m. So within 30 minutes, this all happened. Around 6.30 p.m. that night, her car, which was a gold 2012 Chevrolet Traverse SUV, was found abandoned 12 miles away in an alley. At a press conference later that week, Douglas County Sheriff Tim Dunning said that the vehicle had been abandoned about two and a half hours after it was stolen and that a, quote, feeble attempt had been made to set the SUV, the interior, on fire. A feeble attempt. So nine days later, on August 30th, so like a month after he got out of prison, mm-hmm. Nico Jenkins was arrested on completely unrelated terroristic threats on his <laughs> then-wife, Shalanda. So by the time of his arrest, there has the the evidence has like piled up against him. It's just mounted against him. And investigators had an image of a female associate on surveillance. It was either his sister or his cousin at a local gun shop buying the distinct ammunition that had been used to commit the murders. It was the Brennicky Classic Magnum 12 gauge, a.k.a. Deer Slugs. That was the ammo that was used. More footage was pulled from cameras along the route of Andrea's abandoned SUV. The evening of September 3rd, Nico confesses to all of the murders during a rambling eight-hour interview. He tells police that the murders were acts of sacrifices to Apophis, also called Apep, an ancient Egyptian god of chaos. After his confession, he's charged with four counts of murder. On November 3rd, Nico Jenkins wrote a letter to the Omaha World Herald to the prosecutors and a judge stating that he wished to plead guilty to all the murders, stating that he would defend Apophis and his kingdom with, quote, animalistic, savage brutality. On February 19th of 2014, Nico Jenkins filed a federal lawsuit against the state of Nebraska for releasing him from prison the first time, stating that his claims of hearing voices from Apophis were ignored. The lawsuit was filed for $24.5 million. Also in the lawsuit, he claimed that 
um, being put in solitary confinement made his schizophrenia worse. He said that corrections officers were effectively responsible for the deaths. Nico claimed that his problems were caused by mental illness, stating he had schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress disorder, and bipolar disorder, along with OCD. So a judge orders a psychiatric evaluation and, and, men and mental health um, professionals declared him competent to stand trial. They did mm -hmm. conclude, though, that he did suffer from an antisocial personality disorder and that he was faking psychotic symptoms to avoid taking responsibility for his actions. <sighs> that's that's one you don't I've I don't think I've ever heard that one before. I no. like it. I know I do too. Like, yeah, you, you got problems, but you're also faking. You just, yeah. you don't want to accept what you did. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, and, and did he not see the mummy? We don't mess with ancient Greek religions or ancient <laughs> or Egyptian religions. People come on. <laughs> Seriously, man. So like when you said that, I was like, no, no, we're not doing this. No, <laughs> there's no underground ancient Egyptian worshiping. We've seen mummies. <laughs> a story a few years ago where they found a mummy and there was like red sludge and there was a petition for people wanting to drink it to get superpowers dude have you not watched a movie you know no. what happens when you mess with the mummy stop it no you think bed bugs are bad <laughs> so trial commences and at his request um he's allowed to represent himself <laughs> wait <laughs> okay but he does have the guidance of advisory attorneys. Yeah, Apophis was the second chair. <laughs> so throughout the trial, he maintains that everything he had done was become because of Apophis. Again, second mm -hmm. chair. Um, during the trial, when prosecutors recounted the details of his horrific murders, Nico would then begin to speak in gibberish in tongues and howl and laugh. On April 6th, he, he's still going for the insanity defense. Just right. And the judge is looking at him like, dude, no. Mm -mm. So on April 16th, 2014, Judge Peter B uh, Battalion found Nico guilty of all four murders. Nico was originally scheduled to be sentenced on August 11th of 2014, but that sentencing was delayed in order to um, hold a hearing that determined whether or not he was capable of understanding the death penalty proceedings that were against him. So so, his, his whole act, antics about acting crazy in the courtroom coming into play again. Yeah. Yeah. So on July 24th, Judge Badalon orders Jenkins to be housed at the Lincoln Regional Center here in Lincoln. No, I wasn't here, but still at the psychiatric hospital until uh, doctors were satisfied that his condition about his condition. But get this officials here were like, nah, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> they stated that they didn't have adequate security, <laughs> but they did agree to treat him at a Lincoln prison. So that like, they were like, no, we can't hold him at the hospital. He cray. Yeah, no, that's, I respect that. They're like, hey, uh, we don't feel like this is safe for us and anyone else. So we'll just, we'll meet you at the jail. <laughs> right. I mean, more than fair, more than respect that. So the doctors, two psychiatrists and one psychologist concluded that, yep, fake him. He's completely, um, he completely understands what's happening with his death, penal death penalty sentencing. So their findings were actually countered by a private psychiatrist who said that he suffered from schizophrenia, PTSD, and possibly he was bipolar. So this drags on. Finally, in May of 2017, he's sentenced to death by a three-judge panel. And he's also sentenced to an additional 450 years in prison on weapons charges connected with the murders. On April 20th of 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to hear his appeals case. Nico made headlines during the trial because he, to try to back up his insanity claims, used mm -hmm. sharp objects to carve into his body, including his forehead, and he cut off his penis. So he was also pretending to be a doctor. <laughs> he carved 
into his forehead. He actually, okay, let me back up. So he carves into his forehead and, and then he carves his tongue to look like a serpent tongue for Apophthus. Well, you, you can get that done though. There's just a split in the front and then you get the two wigglies. That's like, a, that's, that's like, a, like, it's like a cosmetic thing. People do that. I know, but it's so weird. It's not, I mean, hey, you do you. I shouldn't say it's weird. He did it intentionally to be weird. Yeah. I mean, bell bottoms are weird, but people still did it. <laughs> hey, I wore bell bottoms. Um, okay, so then he tattoos three sixes on his forehead, but he did it in the mirror. And so it came out, <laughs> it came out backwards and upside down and looked like three nines. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. So apparently not even so a uh, serial murder and a severed penis will stop someone from finding quote true love because nico jenkins is apparently engaged to a woman from texas named don Argu- uh, arguello um and to celebrate their love he inked her name on his face how is their room <sighs> i don't know i don't know so don says of nico that um she wasn't fond of the tattoo but she also says He's not what the media has made him out to be. He's an enigma. He has feelings. He's very sensitive. He's very intelligent. I'm, a, okay. I'm, 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 I'm gonna leave that to you, Don, because I'm not trying to find out. Um, the two met when she was doing volunteer work for a nonprofit that advocates for death row, uh, death row inmates and their families. As of this recording, yes, they are still engaged. The the last execution in the state of Nebraska was in 1997. It was Robert Williams, who was put to death by electric chair for killing two women in 1977. So I told you we were going to talk about Nico's family. So let's do that real fast. Mm -hmm. Because they were involved in his murders. Like a lot of family was involved in his murders. So we talked about his father, David, his mother, Lori. Lori had a criminal record. She was found guilty of concealing evidence and providing false information about the purchase of ammunition. She was found not guilty of providing gasoline to Nico. Remember the fire that they tried to Mm -hmm. set on Andrea's car. So even though the gas that she provided to Nico was used to set that fire, since she had no prior use of it, she wasn't found guilty on that. She was, however, sentenced to five to six years. Um, she previously served a 10-year sentence for being a felon in possession of ammunition. Jeez. So we got the mom helping out. Mm-hmm. So then Erica, one of Nico's sisters, she's an accessory to Nico's murders. She was one of the two women who lured out the first two victims. She also aided Nico in the death of Curtis Bradford and assisted in the death of Andrea Kruger. She was previously serving a 10-year sentence for unrelated robberies um, and the assault of a corrections officer and the beating and killing of a fellow inmate, Christine Bordeaux, her cousin, uh, who uh, was the other female that helped lure out the men. Um, In 2003, so Christine actually testified against Erica and Nico in their trial. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in 2003, she was also... Uh, found responsible for a carjacking that was committed with her uh, with Melanie and her cousin Velez Levering. So I mean, uh, they they just get everybody involved. Yeah, it's you got the the entire family reunion. It's like yeah. you know, you we're gonna go hit the 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 old country buffet, or would you like to commit a crime spree? Let's, let's do murder or lunch. Yeah. So then we have Warren Levering, his uncle. He aided in the robbery and murder of Andrea Kruger as well. He pled guilty to charges of attempted robbery and accessory charges in Andrea's death. He was charged with first degree murder charges, um, even though he personally didn't kill Andrea. He was sentenced to 40 years in prison. His sentence was actually cut in half and he was released in 2020. So then we have Lori Salis. She's his younger sister and she's charged in connection to Curtis Bradford's murder. She was accused of hiding the murder weapon. Lori is the daughter of Lori Jenkins and Patrick Salis, who passed in 1995. She said she considered David uh, more of her father. 
Then we have Melanie Jenkins, another sister of Nico. She's not currently incarcerated. She testified, she testified against Erica. She actually previously was convicted in 2005 for robbery and a carjacking in 2003. She was never connected to any of Nico's crimes, though. As, you know, there wasn't room. <laughs> Everybody else was connected. Yeah. There weren't any, there weren't any jobs left. They were like, uh, what can I do? Uh, sorry, we're, we're out. Yeah, everything's taken. Uh, everything's taken. You could just, you know, bring some plates or something. Oh. <sighs> So like I have in the past with several stories that we've done, I found this one on TikTok, but not in the typical way. He was actually part of a trend and it was after looking into him that I found out that he was from Nebraska. And I was like, I, I got to know more. Um, mm-hmm. Adam, do you remember the Chuck Norris tweets a few years ago that were really big? Like Chuck Norris doesn't do pushups. He pushes the world down. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, that was like a thing. That was like a playground joke back in the day. Too. Right. Well, apparently Nico is the subject of some pretty epic tweets as well. (laughs) Like, um, he's the type of person that wears sunglasses to protect the sun from his eyes. Um, When he was late to school, the teachers punished the other kids for being early. And people get out of their wheelchairs to help him up the stairs. (laughs) So Now, is this the dude that you posted a TikTok of? Yes. Where he turns and looks at you and then <laughs> yes. like, okay. So the trend All was, coming. The, the trend was like, he's been accused. He was accused of killing 19 people just for looking at him. And then of course you like look away real fast. So yes, that was, that was the TikTok that I posted. Gosh, I was still trying to figure out. Cause I wasn't sure if this is like, is this supposed to, guy supposed to be handsome? What's no. What's going on here? Cause, no, cause... he's just supposed to be real scary. Real scary. Real yeah. Scary. That, I got the real scary part. <laughs> My scare dar is pretty good. <laughs> but there you go. That is the wild story of Nico Jenkins, who is right here in Nebraska. And he's sentenced to death, but the, there's no timetable on that. No, no, no timetable on that. But even if that was to be overturned, which is, you know, what he's fighting for, he still has that 450 years. So it's not yeah. like he's getting out, but. He's not getting out. And, and there's the school of thought that maybe, you know, living that long incarcerated is worse than getting, you know, getting a chance to to pass away and only, you know, not have to do, spend your whole life in jail. I don't know. Yeah. I just think it's, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I shouldn't laugh at this because if it gets back to him, you know, you know, but he tried to carve it and it was backwards. Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're carving stuff into your skin in the mirror which is not an experience that i've ever had before i'm sure there's a lot going through your mind and the properties of you know how an image gets refracted by glass and mirror probably isn't the top thing in your mind well it's funny how things get reflected because even like watching tiktok videos people sometimes say oh he's got on a wedding ring or she's got on a wedding ring and they're like no things are flipped yeah. Because it's, you know, the camera has flipped things and then you're trying to like figure it out. So, I mean, yes, there is some of that, you know, I'm sure, but also, I mean, I, I try to do like the, 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 the pandemic haircut, you know, cut my own hair uh-huh. and it is, it is very disorienting to try to figure out like, okay, I'm moving my hand to the left, to the right. Yeah. Where's the, when you're looking at the mirror. So <laughs> I'll, I'll give, I'll give him a little bit of benefit of the doubt on that a little leeway just a tiny tiny smidge (laughs) but yeah there you go that is the story of nico jenkins that is the b side so on the a side today we're going to take a little bit different uh path Uh, certainly not uh the you know entire family involved in a crime spree Mm -hmm, path mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh but a walk down memory lane as we often do on the a side i was enjoying some beautiful weather up here in saint paul which means it was almost above freezing the other day and i took my pup out for a real nice long walk and i i love going on the long walks because i've got this especially in the winter, I've got a stocking cap, but it's got two little speakers inside right by the ears. So it looks just like a regular stocking cap, but it's actually like a headphones it built inside the stocking cap. And for some reason, it makes me feel very, very cool. Like I'm a spy. 
Uh, and so I, I really like wearing that and listening to music while the dog and I go for a walk. Um, as a you know middle-aged man, I don't have to be nearly as scared about my surroundings because I'm a middle-aged man. If somebody's going to knock me over, they're going to knock me over. <laughs> and also, I don't. I just don't have that mindset I, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day about how cool it is that i love listening to music and all these new playlists on my walk and they're like yeah i wish i could do that i just don't feel safe to have my ears covered and i was like oh that's an entirely different experience so mm-hmm. i, I new, newly reminded how lucky i am uh, but as i'm listening to music i'm just kind of bouncing through old playlists and things and i come back to the building and I walk in and we walk into the lobby here at my building and there's this you know little sort of lounge area where there's some fireplaces and chairs and there's the tv and it's where a lot of the dog owners when they get done with their walk they'll stop there and so all the dogs get together and meet everybody so no matter what time of day if we walk into the building Lorelai uh, will always turn and try to go see if there's any of her dog friends or people friends that are hanging out over there so she always pulls over there so pulls me over there there's a group talking and they're just finishing up watching an old episode of saturday night live And it was from way back in 1995 and it had just ended. uh, The musical performance had just ended and the group was trying to figure out who was performing on this episode because it was an old one. And there were definitely people in that room that were not born when this episode aired. So they did not have any idea who the band was. And I looked up and I said, holy cow. I remember watching this episode. Also, I would like you all to know that I'm very old as I walk in. Uh, and I said, that's silver chair. And everyone just looks at me like, oh, okay, what oh, does yeah. that even mean? And I'm like, silver chair. They were like these teenage kids who came out of nowhere from Australia who won this couple of uh, B- Battle of the Bands competitions and got an album and broke into like the top 10 billboard charts here in the US. And they were 15, 16 years old. And I, I remember th- these guys are going to be absolutely huge. They're going to be the biggest deal. And then I don't really remember what happened to them. I remember that episode of Saturday Night Live. I remember Frog Stomp was the album that everybody had, or I was notorious for borrowing everyone's albums and forgetting to return them for like years and sometimes ending up with two of other people's albums. I believe Frog Stop at one point I had at least two copies in my car because I'd have some friend bring bring it along to play it because we all wanted to listen to it. But I was like, you know what? I was convinced when I was 15, 16 at the same time that these guys were going to be the next huge thing. They were going to be bigger than Nirvana or Stone Temple Pilots or Pearl Jam. They were the, the new wave of grunge alternative music. And it didn't really work out that way. They still became a really big hit in the u.s after the first album their second album charted in the u.s the second album came out in 1997 uh named freak show uh but as i had completely missed at the time when i'm in high school and college doing my own thing and i don't know that the internet was reporting it nearly as much uh as it probably would have been if it happened you know 25 years later today uh but the band itself with the pressure of being a worldwide phenomenon and the same expectations that i had a as a fan had put into them oh you guys are going to be the you know they're only 15 years old just make like how much better are they going to be as they get older and everything's going to be great and they're the best thing that's light spread evidently the band themselves uh which consisted of three individuals it was daniel johns who was the vocalist and guitarist uh, Chris Janu, who was a bass guitarist, and then Ben Gills, who was on drums, were the three main members of the band. There were a couple other people be in different songs and stuff, but those three had gotten together all the way back in high school. In fact, two of them knew each other when they were seven years old. So they grew up together, started playing music, become a big hit. They win one battle of the bands competition win a second battle of the bands competition which then gets them a record deal with murmur they become out with frog stomp which they recorded in i think it was nine days Uh well so you get you get like a bunch of high school kids in a room writing songs like crazy having a great time pump out a record in nine days and then it goes huge it's one of the best-selling albums in Australia's history because they're from Australia, but it also is one of the first acts since NXS to top 
get, break into the Billboard top 200 top 10 as an Australian act. And the pressure from that point on, evidently, was incredibly uh, crushing for the band and especially uh, on the relationships within the band. The second album, Freak Show, which barely uh, I kind of remember from 1997, but as I said, was in high school at the time. So things get a little fuzzy on anything outside of my own world, Mm -hmm. uh, was basically a critical mixed bag. Uh, The music felt very uh, progressive. It was more their own voice, whereas Frog Snop was more of a sort of homage to the classic grunge uh, metal motif, uh, you know, the, your Nirvana's, Stone Temple Pilots, uh, Pearl Jam's, Alice in Change, that style. Uh, this was more their own musical style, but the lyrics got darker and darker and really was the pressure of trying to be teenagers and become this huge worldwide phenomenon and try to live up to that with their second album. Frog Stop being recorded in such a short period of time, you could tell it was just fun and visceral and excitement kind of crafted right into an album now all that fun starts to go away and uh, they still become a very successful act they are one of the most successful acts in the history of australia in terms of the charts they had five different albums come out but by the time their third album is going you're already starting to see rumbles that they're not having any fun their music has changed a little bit the group itself is starting to argue a little bit more uh there are some thoughts that you know they were on the verge of breaking up then they took a hiatus and then for the wave aid concerts in 2005 got back together wave aid was uh sort of like you know feed the world but a a australian specific uh fundraising event the band gets back together they play they're having a good time again they start to record again and then get a couple other albums out but by 2011 things have deteriorated to the point where the band breaks up on indefinite hiatus and to this day has not gotten back together there was some interviews in the last couple of years with the uh, lead singer daniel johns who basically says that he didn't want to stop being friends with the band, but he didn't want to play that music anymore and had grown away. And so they, uh, you know, sort of the classic almost, you know, John, Paul, George, and Ringo feeling of one band member wants to play one style of music and the others want to play a different style of music and no longer can they all work in the same page. But after they split up in 2011, uh, several articles in the last year have kind of gone back, you know, uh, music monthlies, uh, music magazines from Australia have gone, hey, it's been 10 years since they broke up. Are we hearing any rumble, rumbles? Are they going to get back together? And even to this day, uh, Daniel Johns, who the lead singer in an article with uh, the tone deaf from Bragg Media, which is a new website for me, uh, talks about how he doesn't anticipate them ever being able to play together again, that their uh, relationship has deteriorated so far to the point where it's not even fun to play the music that they used to. So from this huge height of 1995, where you've got these young out of nowhere kids who record this really fun over the top, you know, classic grunge alternative album. And we think the whole world is going to be their oyster. And we got all this pressure on them. Uh, to now 25 years later uh you've got that same group that created such magic in a short period of time for the frog stomp can't even be in the same room with each other so it is a classic sort of riff on the old school band breaking up story Mm -hmm. uh but it was a real bummer because like i said i hadn't really thought of them in years until i walked into the lobby and then i've listened to frog stomp at least three times in the last week just on walks and it's still a really really great album and it's it's a bummer that uh expectations and life and pressure and stress and uh all the things that that can inspire there was some issues with uh mental health and also uh eating disorders related to body image and how people were perceiving them a lot that went into sounds like a really hard time uh, for the band after that immediate success. They've all, they've had a lot of success since then. They're one of the best selling artists in Australia for their catalog, but they can no longer even 
basically hang out and those friendships are gone, which is the one thing that uh, the lead singer Donald Johns kept coming back to is that he didn't want to lose the friendships, but he didn't want to be in the band and there wasn't any way to separate that. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, that's, it's one of the dangers and the challenges of working really closely with people that are family or friends is that can put a lot of stress on it and uh, it can lead to some unfortunate outcomes. But the original album, Frog Stomp, I was really, really glad to rediscover. And uh, just walking into the lobby and seeing the band and having all those memories flood back of the expectations and the excitement that I, as a fellow, you know, I, fellow kid, at the same time, they're doing stuff on a worldwide stage. And they were just, you know, basically a couple of guys from, you know, the same class who got together and played music. It felt like a, a really magical story. So it's a bit disappointing to see that it has the kind of traditional ending. Uh, but I'm glad that I got to re-listen to Frog Stomp and I highly recommend it. It is, you know, available on all the streaming platforms. Uh, Spotify is, is my preferred one right now. Uh, but uh, if you have never listened to it and you're a fan of uh, any like modern metal, and this is, you know, it's been 25 years since this out, well, 20, almost 26, 27. It's been a long time since 1995. <laughs> So if you had, yeah, if you if you have never heard uh, the album, highly recommend checking it out. Uh, Tomorrow is their biggest hit. It is uh, one that I think if you don't realize you've heard, you'll start you'll start to listen. You'll be like, oh my yeah yeah, I heard this. I just didn't know who this was. Uh, I might have attributed it like I did to all uh, strangely Beatles, you know, all English songs from the fifties and sixties when I was a kid were Beatles songs, no matter if they were sung by the Beatles or not. I just right. put them all together. Yeah. So. Uh, definitely check that out and uh, that will hopefully uh, warm your heart a little bit of the memories of how good it was, uh, even though the ending has been all too common for the band. Well, I don't know if you saw this. So Freak, off of the Freak show from, it was their follow-up to Frog Stomp. Mm -hmm. So he, Daniel Johns, just literally released that they're doing like, he's, he's doing some commemorative merch for Freak. For the 25th anniversary really yeah oh, it's, i completely missed that like he it just dropped that he's doing yeah. this well that's cool i mean it makes sense that and it, i guess they in my brain it was like well they just dropped off the face of the earth well no they just weren't prevalent in the american music scene they still had you know, after their second album they had four more successful albums in australia so it's just another good reminder of uh probably some socioeconomic bias when I think things ended because they weren't in my immediate worldview. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Is that the A side? That's the A side. Awesome. Well, this has been episode 77, like, whoa. So does that, is that, that's almost a year and a half, right? Did that take us to a year and a half? Worth so more than that, because we're like 52 weeks. Mm -hmm. So then, so I guess next week, 78, right? Would be a year and a half. Would be, that'd be 52 plus 26 is 78. Yeah. Man. Awesome. Yeah. But I mean, that's a year and a half. That's a very long time. So I've, I'm glad we're still doing it. And I hope we continue to still do it. I, I know at some point my uh, coattail riding will, uh, will leave <laughs> me with, with nothing but coattails, but I'll ride them as long as I can. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, man. Okay. So, of course, all of our sources, resources, photos will be on our website, Adam. A side, B side, podcast dot square dot site. Why did I do an <laughs> accent? I do not know. Can I do all of them in one sentence? Yes, I can. Are you Emily in Paris now? Oh, bonjour. I just know that the, the one uh, accent class that I have taken in my life as an actor, that teacher, if they listen to this, will be very disappointed in everything that just happened 30 seconds ago. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So you got Ace and B side podcast at square that site. Also, we've got all the socials. We've got Instagram. We've got Twitter. We've got Facebook. Um, you can get with us on there. Also post where you're listening. We would love to know where you're listening. Um, which episode you're on because you might not be on 77 yet uh, so we'd love to know which episode you're on which episode was your favorite uh, do you have uh, 
a case for me or a movie or a show or music for Adam, we would love to to hear from you on that as well. You can email us a side b side podcasts with an s at gmail.com. Like your Slytherins. Um, and then of course you can support the podcast at buy me uh buy me a coffee.com slash a side b side pod. And of course the money is literally the use for coffee and then promotion and production of the podcast am i forgetting anything adam no i I think you mentioned all the things uh i am still sometimes on yahoo messenger if anybody else is out there just rocking on yahoo are you really uh, no i don't even know if it's available (laughs) i was gonna say wow adam well because you're still on don't you still tumblr sometimes tumble is it I, i i i've got i've got a blogger a blogger, okay. A blogger, yeah. I got a Tumblr, uh, but so yeah, yeah. We're out there everywhere. Just find us. And my favorite is sometimes <laughs> you just you do have to give me a second sometimes because my I love my parents to death, but they're a little bit behind on the on which episode we're on. And then I'll get this text message asking me a question, but it's <laughs> it's responding to the to the topic that is in the episode they're listening in, and it takes me a little bit sometimes to retrofit my brain to like 10 episodes ago so i don't we love all the questions just give me some processing time to figure out what's going on (laughs) oh man all right adam thank you so much thank you brooke